This is just something I was thinking about yesterday, and it interested me a little bit just from the standpoint of wondering what you guys would say. Would you rather be the Young Bucks or Roman Reigns? And I realize the Young Bucks are two people. Pick Nick or Matt. I don't care. If you want to be both of them in your own sick, twisted world, I don't care. Who would you rather be, though? I'm really interested to see your responses, and that's pretty much it. Now, as much as the Young Bucks annoy me, as much as I dislike them, as much as I think they suck and represent so many bad things about wrestling, which of course was a whole span of about 10 seconds of me trashing them, to which a lot of you clowns will only focus on instead of the several minutes that will immediately follow where I actually defend them and say good things about them, I challenge you to sit there and do the same thing for, oh, you won't be able to, so shut the hell up. Stop your bitching about the Young Bucks. You want a cuck for them? I don't give a crap. But when you look at the Young Bucks, though, in all seriousness, there's a lot of appeal for them in terms of how they're able to go about conducting their business and how they're able to go and make money really on their own. They're not stuck working for any one company. They're more of the true definition of an independent contractor, not the BS that WWE pulls off for tax purposes and for benefits purposes where they don't have to pay any of that crap when it comes to the talent. They make the talent foot that bill. You know, the young bucks at least sit there and while they have the bad where they still are on their own for their benefits and so on and so forth, they also get to live a true independent contractor type of business lifestyle. They cannot work for somebody if they don't want to. They can choose to work for somebody if they want to, they can work for who they want to, when, where, how, why they want to, what they want to do. They could choose all of that. They have greater control over their characters. They have greater control over their stories because ultimately for the Young Bucks, if they aren't happy with how they're being featured somewhere, they don't have to go there. They can just choose to go to some other independent promotion here in the U.S. You know, outside of maybe they would care a little bit about how they're featured in New Japan, that might be it. But I don't see New Japan completely and totally souring on them either. Also, when you look at it from the Young Bucks standpoint, they get a larger percentage of their own merch sales because they control their own merch. They go at their own. So instead of getting a sliver of those merch sales in WWE's uh, world based off of royalties, you're talking about more of like a 50-50 split with pro wrestling tees. And based off of how much pro wrestling tees features the Young Bucks and the Bullet Club and that merch their merch sales are probably going to only increase, especially if the WWE continues with the cease and desist stuff. So they get a larger cut and greater control over what happens in terms of their characters, their likenesses, in terms of their merch, all of that. They're making an easy six figures apiece without having the pressure of being the guys. They don't have to carry any specific wrestling brand or wrestling promotion. They don't have to be tied to it in terms of the the good and the bad, the highs and the lows, not to worry about any of that. There's really not a lot of pressure, honestly, with the Young Bucks in terms of how well or not well they perform or how well they deliver or don't deliver. There just isn't that pressure there as opposed to a Roman Reigns who does have that pressure being the top guy of WWE. He's not able to go wherever the hell he wants and do whatever the hell he wants. He can't sit there and say, I want to work here, I want to work there, and he's not getting as large of a cut of his merch sales as the Young Bucks are, I assure you of that. Also for the Young Bucks, just as importantly perhaps for their happiness and for their sanity, they don't have to work for Vince McMahon. They don't have to work under the WWE umbrella. They don't have to deal with the WWE's creative team totally and completely screwing the pooch with them, which they surely would as they do with so many other. The bottom line is if they can't get the Dudleys and the Hardys right in their return, what the hell makes you think that they're going to get the Young Bucks right really the first time around? Give me a break. And they don't have to deal with Vince and his whims and his changing of opinion and mind or anything like that. They don't have to worry about any of that crap. And as toxic as that WWE environment and WWE locker room and WWE office environment can be, the Bucks don't have to do any of that. So I don't mean to sit there and say that these guys could just fuck off and they don't have to care at all, but they don't have nearly the problems of dealing with others in terms of the business like a Roman Reigns and other cats within WWE have. 
And they don't have to worry about somebody else sabotaging them, somebody else getting pissed off and getting heat, and now we're going to bury these guys. They don't have to worry about that crap. Because they bring a certain audience to the table. They sell a certain amount of merch. They're in terms of the independent scene, in terms of the hardcore fan base, there's enough of appeal there where these companies that deal with the Young Bucks aren't really going to want to piss off the Young Bucks because they will bring something to the table, even if I don't always want to give them credit for it or not. And, and really, honestly, I applaud the Young Bucks for really being able to figure out how to do it on their own for the most part and not having to sit there and go prove themselves in Vince's organization. And they've gotten to where they've gotten without really having that WWE exposure. They really haven't had that international distribution um, machine mechanism and infrastructure that the WWE has. And also for the Young Bucks, based off of who they are, you know, whereas Roman Reigns has to deal with a much less favorable fan base and fans are split and a lot of people hate him, in general, the Young Bucks are dealing with a much more favorable, much more loyal, um, much more willing to follow type of fan base. While sure, the overall audience in terms of wrestling fans that they perform for is much less than it is and don't get delusion and think that New Japan is as big as WWE. You're insane if you think so. As not to dismiss New Japan, it's just we have to be realistic here. No matter how much it melts or cucks for them, we all know this is true. They do not measure up in terms of international distribution and so forth like the WWE is. They just don't. But the positive for the Young Bucks is they have a nice little kind of buffer zone in there. Well, it might kind of cap their ceiling in terms of just how big a stars they could truly be, especially from a mainstream standpoint. They also know that they have this real ride or die fan base that is really going to keep their floor now getting into NFL draft speak. Their ceiling might not be as high as in terms of a Roman Reigns in terms of the amount of money that you could potentially make, but their floor is really, really high because I can't see that hardcore internet independent fan base really turning away from the Young Bucks. So they know they've got certain protect protections and mechanisms and defenses built in where they know as long as they want to keep doing this, they're going to have a pretty good lifestyle. They're going to make a decent amount of money. They're good. So yeah, I mean, when you look at the Young Bucks, while they're not making seven figures, surely they're making six figures a piece and probably, you know, 150, 200,000 a piece. I mean, they're making decent money. I don't know the exact figures. Again, you'll have to ask their personal accountant, Dave Miltz, or how much uh, they would make. But they don't have to deal with Vince. They don't have to deal with WWE's creative ruining them. Uh, they have more control over what they do. They can do what they want, when they want, where they want. There's a lot of appeal to that. And a lot of those built-in benefits that Roman Reigns just doesn't have. I mean, he can't do whatever the hell he wants. He can't sit there and work wherever the hell he wants. And also, from Roman Reigns' standpoint, he has to do so much stuff outside of just performing that the Young Bucks do. The Young Bucks have, aren't having to sit there and make all these big-time uh, mainstream media appearances. They're not having to do all these stupid autograph signings at shows uh, where he's required to do it. Like the Young Bucks, sure, they'll do that type of stuff. Like They'll do local TV spots where they make appearances, they'll do the wrestling conventions, they'll do some of this other stuff, but they could choose to. They're not mandated to. They don't have to. They're not being told by the puppet master to do so where Roman Reigns is. But for Roman Reigns' standpoint, he has the ability to stay stateside far more often, whereas the Young Bucks have to travel even more to make what they make because they've got to go to Japan and stay in Japan for extended periods of time. And if you've got... You know, family, that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Not saying that the WWE's road life is easy, but it is easier and you're stateside more often. And you're also stateside more often making far more money when you're Roman Reigns. You're making seven figures, maybe two to three million a year as the guy of the number one company in the world. Whether you like it or not, that is a fact, Jack. The guy is the top guy of the top wrestling company in the world. That is not up for dispute from a bottom line standpoint. And even New Japan Cuck Meltzer would agree with you on that. Roman Reigns also gets to take advantage of the much larger national television platform that the WWE has. He gets to deal with 
the international distribution that is far greater than anything that the Young Bucks have, it could be much easier for Roman Reigns' profile to be higher, for his merch sales to be overall bigger in the grand scheme of things because he is appealing to a much bigger audience, even if that audience doesn't like him as much, even if a large swath or segment of that audience does not particularly care for him, can't stand him, and turns off the TV when he comes on or doesn't buy his merch. The fact is, is that Roman Reigns, with all the appearances that he's able to make, it helps elevate his profile and open up opportunities for him someday outside of wrestling. He has an easier path to work in movies because of WWE Studios, because of some of the positions WWE will put him in, in terms of some of the um, mainstream appearances that he will make as the top guy, that down the road, he'll be able to get other mainstream opportunities that the Young Bucks would never even be able to dream of. They will have no shot at, they will have no chance at. So whereas the Young Bucks, when they get, let's say, to their 40s, who knows what the hell they're going to do. Roman Reigns, by the time he gets to his 40s, he might be making movies. He might be on TV. He might be doing wrestling part-time. He might be doing a whole different bunch of things. And if you think I'm crazy, did you ever think Cena was going to get big Hollywood roles like Transformer movies and so on and so forth? Today show appearances and all of this? Not really. I mean, let's be honest. The funny thing is his star profile, whatever it is, is the highest it's ever been. When he's in WWE the least, it means the least to WWE. But Roman Reigns has a much easier path to have that type of income still coming to him in his late 30s and 40s and even 50s than the Young Bucks could ever dream of. And he's able to work a much less demanding type of match and the Young Bucks have to sit there and bump the hell out of themselves because they never really bothered how to really work. But it is who they, is at, who they are at this point in time. And honestly, it's made them money, so they can keep doing it. That's fine. But while they're flipping and kicking, Roman Reigns is cock-fisting and Superman punching and spiriting his way uh, to a much easier match style, much, le much less physically demanding type of match style. And oh, by the way, making a shit ton more money for it. He gets to work and main event WrestleMania every year. No offense to the Wrestle Kingdom crowd and so on and so forth. And those shows do huge gates and perform in front of big audiences. It's not WWE's WrestleMania. It's not Mania. It doesn't have that whole feeling of being a WrestleMania week where you have cities in the U.S. and around the world bidding for the right to host WrestleMania. They're not doing that crap with Wrestle Kingdom. I promise you that. He gets to be the top guy in the top match on the top show in professional wrestling. Young Bucks will never sniff that. He's on a top-rated U.S. cable show every single week where the Young Bucks, when you're talking about in terms of U.S. television, they're either on Access TV or they're on some type of Sinclair broadcasting between New Japan and ROH. Whose TV deal is better for their mainstream exposure? And bottom line is, whether people like them or not, far more people know who Roman Reigns is than the Young Bucks, period. And he's in a position where you have the pressure of being the top guy, but you also have a lot of built-in protections because now, similar to Cena, Reigns is kind of that Cena 2.0 where Reigns is going to be in a protected spot where he's Vince's top prop. All the protections that go with it, guys are going to be built up just to be fed to him. The WWE is going to manipulate things to be very beneficial to Roman Reigns. So he could take it easier at the top than their young bucks can. I Look, I understand why a lot of people uh, have an appeal or affinity for the young bucks. Not me. Never going to happen. And I can get, honestly, in terms of the here and the now, we're not having to deal with Vince and WWE and being able to control your own thing, even though that's a pressure in and of itself, can be really appealing for the young bucks. And they're able to make a decent living, and I won't take that away from them. I know they're able to make a decent living. But me personally, and, and if you don't agree with me, and you'd rather be the Young Bucks, that's perfectly fine, and I would like to know why. I personally would rather be Roman Reigns, because ultimately wrestling is a business about money. Roman Reigns makes more money in a year than the Bucks could make in six, eight, or ten of them. Who would you rather be? Not to mention all the other opportunities and avenues and doorways that are open for Roman Reigns because he's the top guy in WWE. Sure, it could be grinding to have a large segment of the fan base be pissed off at you and hate you all the time. But ultimately, you're in the business to make money. And even if that's happening, if you can laugh your way to the bank, 
And I'd much rather be Roman Reigns than the Young Bucks. 